Hello everybody and welcome back to the Triple Jump podcast. It's a video game podcast. My name is Ben. My name is Peter. And my name is Ashton. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Good morning. How are we doing this week? Now that the heater has turned on, Mm. my week is going a lot better. Yes. That's true. For a minute there, it wasn't on. No. And that's the story. And they were shouting at it and they were like, why are you not turning on? It's because they hadn't turned it on. It was on, sort of. Half of it was on. Yeah. It's got like two power systems. It's got a remote. We pressed it. This is the most interesting mm. anecdote yeah. in the world to start this podcast. It's It's got a remote that I turned on and I was like, okay, great. It takes a little while to heat up, so it'll just do its thing. And then 10 minutes later, it still wasn't on. So I turned the remote off and turned it back on again and it beeped and immediately clicked to life. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm don't refusing know. to take responsibility though. I will. I simply will not. No. This podcast is a video game podcast, and each and every week, we're sponsored by a very real video game adjacent sponsor that helps us keep the lights and sometimes the heating on in here. Mm -hmm. I've got the ad read for this week. Are you ready? Yes. It's light, unperfumed, and can be used all over your body, face, and hands to give long-lasting care for dry and sensitive skin, and it's suitable for daily use. Introducing Like a Dragon, Itchin. Oh, I thought you were going to say Dead Face. No, no, (laughs) not Dead Face. That's not that's not a real one. That's no. what this you one that's what you use is. like a dragon itching on. Yes, yeah, you've got dead, dead face. face. <laughs> like a dragon itching lotion visibly reduces redness and improves extremely dry, irritable skin in just two weeks. That's wow. right. Wow. They've officially partnered with uh, E45 mm. to launch a new lotion that will keep your hands nice and uh, smooth while you're playing your video games. Smooth. Wow. And sometimes if you if you don't if you don't like, I don't know what the correct terminology is. You know, when you when you lather up your hands, mm. but then your palms are all greasy. Yeah. Like mm. you sort of have to wipe wipe it off again yeah. on, on the areas where you grip things. You've got to be careful because if you go straight back to your controller after that, you're going to squeeze it like a bar of soap and it's just going to across the room. That's also, why you have to wear your Wiimote strap yeah. all the time. At yeah. all times because we're all playing the Wii. Mm. Or you just do like Of Mice and Men Curly and just put gloves on so your hands stay soft mm-hmm. and you can still play games. Mm. Yeah, you could do that. You get special gamer gloves. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know that there's all sorts of gamer accessories that exist courtesy of uh, we spent however many dollars on Wished Hat. $200, yeah. $200 was it? $200. Yeah, you can get a ring for when you're playing your games that has a little cigarette holster mm. Mm. so you can mount your cigarette and just yeah. sort of... I saw Very a thing cool. advertised to me on Twitter, I think, the other day, mm. where it was just like that. It was a ring, but um, it, it kind of had things that extend <laughs> into your knuckles you. and then go out. And it's ba- it was basically chopsticks on a ring. Yeah. It looks like she's thinking of makes them clench so you can like eat crisps <laughs> while you're gaming and not get the dust all over your controller. And that I was sounds like, amazing. That's actually... That's what you need. You don't like when you get sticky on your fingers from crisps. No, I don't. I don't like that. But also, I try to separate the two activities. I don't yeah, really like I to play games. And typically, eat. wouldn't eat. But so yeah, maybe and... it's just for just for fun. The well, only time I do it is at your house when yeah, we're true. all just eating snacks and play. And then I, I'm always very aware. I eat like a single crisp, and then I'm I'm doing this the crab pinching oh, the just to get the dust off. Yes. Trouser rub. Yeah, yeah the trouser rub's mm-hmm. a classic one. Well, here's a fun thing for Xbox's marketing department who love to create just random crap mm. uh, to go viral on the internet. Uh, a Dorito glove. Yeah. Just one, like like Michael Jackson, but it's got little... Maybe it's just, just two like, fingers. Just on, yeah, just these two fingers. Yeah, little... Yeah. Like little finger fingers. tights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, finger stockings. Yeah. And uh, that way you can eat your... Your crisp. You can eat your crisp. Sorry, the light's like vibrating. Um, and you won't get any on your controller. Anyway, that's besides the point because this is all about Like a Dragon Itching, yeah. Yeah. which releases uh, later this month, I believe. Is that yeah. right? Yep. You would know. You're yeah. the forecaster. But I forgot one. Okay. Well, it's this month I at think some it's point. Still... We're going to ask you all of these questions forever. For yeah, the rest of I think time. it's either the 15th or potentially the 21st. But it could also not be those days. Yeah, it could be so not those days. Look, hey, check out the video. Check out the video. Her from yesterday knows. Her, f- her from yesterday, <laughs> sure. Uh, like a Dragon Ishin is obviously the thing that's coming out mm. later this month. Like so a this Dragon Ishin. Real? It's not real. No, oh. I'm afraid it's not real. But it's I have not real such sponsor. a dead face. <laughs> if only there was real cream that you could use. Uh, sadly, cream. Like a Dragon Ishin. Mummy. Not real, what? Hmm? Get the cream. Mummy, bring, bring, bring me to mummy. Bring me to mummy, get me the cream. 
Uh, no, of course, we're sponsored by wonderful patrons over at patreon.com forward slash team triple jump, where for as little as $1 per month, you can submit questions to this podcast and uh, support us in the process. We've got lots of other tiers available. If you would consider looking at those, maybe we'd really appreciate it and like you a lot for it. Thank you. Breaking news. Uh, I think possibly Dead Island 2 The Spider is in the the cultaholic toilets here. <gasps> really? Because I went just before we started and there is for a, a wicked piss for a wicked piss, wicked piss. Uh, and there was a cobweb up in the corner mm. didn't actually see the spider who owned it but he was giving you privacy yeah but weirdly mm. of all things there was a ladybird in it wow i think i'm assuming the ladybird was captured and ready for dinner but maybe it's a special new breed that There's just spins birds. webs there's a ladybirds about it's too cold for ladybirds yeah, yeah, yeah it's ladybirds a bit, maybe at? it's been there i mean it's the cultaholic toilet so maybe it's been there since That's spring That's That's unlike our toilets i think their toilets are actually clean yeah they actually are so, uh, nicer than ours mm. so they they i don't know if they take care of ladybirds or spiders uh but anyway it doesn't matter Thank you to our patrons. Yes. Patreon.com forward slash team triple jump. Peter, have you got a question for us? Yeah, it's from Cameron Keywood who says, Halo BAP equals one, two, three. Don't know what that means. No, Cameron. I don't know. Don't like understand. the Michael Jackson song. BAP equals one, two, three. <laughs> like, e is it easy as. A, B, C equals, equals one, two, three. <laughs> That's it. It's the algebra. <laughs> Solve for X. Mitchell Jackson. Um, <laughs> Sony has recently released patches for PS1 slash PSP classic games that have added trophy support. Mm. What games would make you want to upgrade? What games would make you want to... Up I think he means what games would you want to have upgraded into having trophies? Or maybe even upgrade to the PS4. Oh, I see, yeah. yeah. Uh, and does the allure of trophies make it a sweet deal? Kind regards, Cameron Keywood. I thought that was what the second part meant, and therefore the ah. first part must mean something else, but it's mm. all sort of the same thing. Hey, yeah. why don't we infer what we want? We, yeah, <laughs> we just answer a completely different question. Exactly. As usual. Uh, I've got a little ad read, and not ad read here, article read here mm. from Video Games Chronicle, written by Chris Scully, and just for some context, PSP game Super Stardust Portable was added to PlayStation Plus in June 2022, but like many of the... Uh, P uh, the titles in the classic games catalog, it didn't have any trophies. Uh, however, as noted by PSN Profiles user Jeff X Free, the game received a patch this week which added trophy support, among other bug fixes, including a platinum trophy. <gasps> this marks the first time that trophies have been retrospectively added to, cl to a classic games title, proving that it's possible for others to get trophies in the future. Mm. Mm. Any game could get a a trophy list uh, providing it's already on the service yeah uh so this this isn't news from the from from the unique angle that games have already got trophy lists that, that we're aware of in terms of them launching uh with a platinum and a trophy list mm. it this is i think maybe the first instance or certainly one of the first instances seeing as it's a headline uh, of a game that's already on the service being patched mm. to have trophies to, support. to now have trophies uh, rather than release with them yeah. but it's like when trophies first launched in 2000 and whenever it was on ps3 mm -hmm. it was like oh my god uncharted's got trophies now wow. and they're terrible i hate them <laughs> they're really hard uh, so that's interesting as a story, I think. But uh, ultimately, in terms of answering the question, it does come back to probably everyone's personal proclivities mm. about trophies. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I've certainly said in the past that I don't find trophies a particular draw uh, to a game. So in that sense, I don't think it's like it certainly wouldn't be enough to make me more likely to upgrade. I'm not going to upgrade now because suddenly, oh, I can get trophies, I can get Platinums in older games. It might be enough to make me go back and replay certain older games if suddenly they had trophies added. Um, so putting the actual, the, the level of upgrade aside, if just for argument's sake, there was a game available to me uh, that had been on the service for a long time, maybe it's a sort of backwards compatible thing, and then suddenly trophies are added, I might think, okay, well, there's some. I, I, well, what I I would probably want to see the trophy list mm -hmm. and see if it was like an interesting bit of challenge on that. If it's just a trophy for every chapter and complete on hard mode or whatever, then that's stuff that if I'd wanted to do that in the first place, I would have done it. Or if I played through the game and you get mm -hmm. one trophy per chapter, yeah. all right, well, I that would only appeal to trophy hunters. Yeah, exactly, because that's not too challenging. But if it's, um, hey, go back and play Spyro, and if you, like, defeat, you know, like, 100 enemies without taking a hit or something, I'm like, okay, well, that's an interesting challenge. I'll yeah. go and do that. So uh, I like the idea that older games 
could have trophies added to them, especially if there are some interesting, unique ones like that. But to answer directly your question, Cameron, personally, I would not be more likely to upgrade um, just based on this new uh, kind of new feature, if you like. What about you, Ashton Matthews? Well, should I have your PlayStation 1 games? I'm going to talk about PlayStation 2 games okay, right now. fine. Because I would like them to add iToy. I would like them to add the iToy games. Yeah. And also I'd like them to add the Buzz games because yeah. I loved the Buzz games as a wee one. And I'm pretty sure I still have the like buzzers I in my cupboard too. at home. Mm. Um, <laughs> I was like searching for my DS at the weekend and I found all the buzzers and I was like, oh, sick games. <laughs> I had a monkey one and I had a like a robot or like an evil genius one. And that was fun. All of those games, they made like 50 of them. Yeah. All from like the Sony's London studio or Liverpool studio, one of them. And they have been, I feel like, 15p in charity shops yeah. for about 20 years now. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much since they launched, they've been 15p in Oxfam. Because mm. there, it's one of those where, looking back, it's not that desirable to have a copy now. But no. at the time, everyone had a copy. Yeah. So there is massive supply and very low demand. Yeah. And also, like everyone had like a different copy like mm. different version of mm -hmm. basically the same game it's like sing star yeah Everyone's with that man on the front with the sort of strange oh buzz spiky. yeah well buzz, buzz. himself yeah mm. i assume his mr. name is mr. Buzz. Buzz. Or quiz his name might be <laughs> quiz i yeah. don't know um i would like those to be added and i would like them to have trophies and i don't really care about trophies that much but i just want can you hey can you add them <laughs> mr sony please uh i used to love the like i toy was it i toy play Mm -hmm. The one, I love that game. It was like the karate one. And, yeah. yeah. And you could just, if you did it right with certain games, you could stand in front of the camera and waggle your finger across the lens back and forth yeah. and yeah. you'd wipe out everything in the stage because yeah. you were just gaming the system. That's yeah, that's what I'd like. Um, and I, like I said, I don't, like Peter, I don't really care that much about trophies, but it would be fun to be like, complete an entire round of buzz and don't get the answer wrong. Don't get the answer wrong. I mean, it would be hard because the questions were always like ridiculous, but I'd like those. You'd eventually like learn all the answers or you yeah. could just pull up a guide and have the answers there to hand. Mm. Um, boring. Man, boring. I want to play Buzz now. I'm sad Sad that I don't oh. have them on have to stream hand. it. Yeah, just on my own. Yeah. With like four buzzers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I would like. Ben, nice. what about you? Um, there's, there's nothing. None of that is appealing to me, really. Even someone who likes trophies. Uh, Easy Platinums, maybe? Not even that necessarily, because I can pay 15p yeah, you can to get the Jumping that. Salad Turbo, yeah. hold X, and get a Platinum trophy in, like, less than a minute. True. If I want that, which I have been doing on my streams, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, there's, I'm trying to think, because a lot of the games that I really enjoyed on those platforms have since been remade or ported mm. or remastered. Mm. So I've got better versions available. So on that front alone, I can't justify paying, or I already own them. Mm. So I can't justify paying for a higher subscription tier just to access them. Uh, the prospect of any game getting a, a trophy list at any time, is uh, that's fun. And I can't deny that that is probably a sweet deal to those who are interested by it. But I'm kind of drawing a blank, really, on older games that trophy support would would lure me to a higher hmm. higher tier for. Um, maybe if the original Crash Team Racing was on there and had a unique trophy list that wasn't the same as the uh, the Nitro Fuel yeah. uh, remake from a few years ago, mm -hmm. that might be interesting. But I'm, I ain't spending any time on it. I ain't spending any money on it either. I'm just not. It it's just not the right. The Venn diagram isn't correct for me no. to be yeah. interested. Yeah, I like the two things, but the crossover isn't enough, isn't appealing enough. It's like a to. tiny little. It's a tiny slither, slither yeah. and it's it's also got a big dollar sign next to it, and I'm like, oh, mm, mm. Mm. I mean, I use the Spyro example, but Reignite trilogy had trophies, yeah. so I wouldn't even you know have to go back and unless, like you say, they would. It was a different list of interesting challenges compared to uh, the remakes and re-releases. That's the thing, like with a lot of these games, certainly with some of the most popular games of the era. They have been, like, if not remade from the ground up with trophy support, they might have been remastered as a separate release with trophy support. Mm -hmm. So to go back and play, like, the actual original PS1 version, you're probably not actually going to gain anything there um, compared to what is already available on more 
like recent generations. Yeah. I'm a big old hippo crip as well because uh, I will applaud to the end any efforts to preserve these games mm. and make them more interesting with trophy lists and modernizing them in that sense. But when it comes down to it, I don't think I'm going to put my money where my mouth is because I'm not just going to support something blindly that I think is a good thing if ultimately it's not actually something that I'm overly interested in. Yeah. I can I can appreciate the value proposition to those that want it. And I, as I said, can appreciate that video game preservation wise, this is a good thing, but I, I, I don't want to spend money on it right now. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm personally just not that interested in, uh, in doing it, which means that they'll probably, you know, give up on it and uh, we'll all be worse off for it. Mm. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, that is the world we live in. Should we move on to something new, Ashton? Yes, it's a new segment that we've never done before. And it's where we talk about games and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called What We Play In. Okay. Oh. It's What We Play In time. Time to talk about the games. What we have been playing. Peter, mm -hmm. what have you been playing? I have, since the previous podcast, played a little bit more Forspoken, but I have now given You've up. You've stopped. On it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right. I will not be playing the rest of that game. Oh, no. Is uh, it really <laughs> that bad? It, it, it's not that bad objectively as a game it's just too big and gameplay wise it's not too well i mean it's probably also a bit too big although i've got a lot more gaming time this year so that's not the main reason it's just i just don't like the writing and oh, i don't like the characters that's um, sad. so it's a shame um but i have been playing uh i've been playing dead space which we'll get to in a minute mm. in review corner very exciting <laughs> mm. uh i've been playing some more of the game that i couldn't talk about last week uh, because I'm talking about it in a few weeks' time uh, when the embargo is gone. Um, and I also, in preparation for my stream that I did at this week at time of uh, release of this podcast, um, played some Silo Sybil uh, before I went live because I was aware that it was going to be a difficult game. And I also wanted, there were no like nice big 1080p screenshots of it uh, to use in my thumbnail. So I played that for about half an hour. Um, and man, I was like, okay, this is going to be difficult. I don't know if you guys caught any of that um, mm. live or after the fact, but Jesus, that game is a um, a PS1 style, like rendering style, uh, 3D platformer mm. inspired by the first Crash Bandicoot game. And my God, was it difficult. Mm. Uh, like it very quickly got very hard. And the first boss fight took like over half an hour for me to complete live on stream um so i mean that's it it's not a um it's well made and it's responsive technically speaking so it's not that like it's so badly done that you can't control it or whatever there's nothing like that so if you like a challenge and you you like a game that punishes you for making mistakes because you made them then hey you should absolutely give it a go i thought it was a lot of fun and I, it's got a lot of charm and uh, nostalgic value um, but, uh, yeah, it's very much a case of like, if you just do the wrong thing, you will die, uh, and it will be your fault and not the games. So, uh, yeah, had a really good time with that. Um, and we'll get to dead space in a bit, uh, on review corner, but I think that's all I've been playing that I can talk about right now. Lovely. Well, I've been playing some games this week. Um, I played some Tiny Tina's Wonderland last night. Oh, because we didn't know what to play and um, we were waiting for something to install. And we thought, hey, we've not finished all the DLCs or got all the trophies yet. So maybe we'll just hop back in. Just in with your hand with those dungeons. Uh, the Chaos Chambers. Yeah. Yeah. We're on level 15, so actually probably won't take us that long to okay. get to 20. But it's just annoying. Last one, I, uh, I had to call in my ridiculously overpowered friend. It yeah. was just so irritating. Mm. Um, yep, so that game's still just... I always want so much more from it than I get, and it's just, it's sad. Um, and then at the weekend, I was with family, and my boyfriend gave me his DS with his R4 card in it, and I basically spent the entire of the weekend being sad and playing Professor Layton and the Curious Village. Oh, excellent. Um, and I've been, I've, been, I've been getting my DS out on the Metro this week on the way to work and, like, solving puzzles. You're like an advert from 2006. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically. But I was really sad this morning because I got my DS out and it ran out of charge. Oh. I hadn't charged it last night, and I was like, damn. Um, but yeah, I've been playing a lot of that and so much of that Ben's had to like not buy, 
but get acquire, acquire. um the other professor Layton games oh, on the I ds see, yes. uh, for me to play mm-hmm. um because he's like you still not finished that one i'm like no some of the puzzles are really hard <laughs> um but i'm enjoying that and then i also played um a couple of hours of hi-fi rush mm-hmm. um i think i'm about i want to say i'm about like a quarter of the way through if not like almost halfway through now um and i'm really enjoying it i think it's really good I really like the art style and the combat. It's actually much easier to be good at than I thought it was going to be. Um, I find it really satisfying to like hit to the beat and stuff. I always forget the combos, but that's a me issue. That's not a game issue. Like I just spam in the buttons and hoping for the best. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I really enjoy it. And um, I'm meeting like new characters that have different abilities that you can like summon into combat as well, mm-hmm. just like briefly, or to help you out with like traversal of the areas. Um, yeah, I think it's really good. I think they've done a really good job at making it. And um, the character is objectively annoying um, <laughs> that you play as. Yeah. And my favorite thing about it is that people were like, oh my God, I love Cho. So I love him so much. And I'm like, him and Frey from Forspoken. Hey, they're the same. That's the same character, guys. This is the whole like, whoa, did I just do that? That's the same. That's the same. I know people. I know Peter was saying that he's seen that. um, They're like, oh, well, it's like a cartoon. Social media, yeah. So it's kind of like fits it in a bit better, but. I was just some of the like dialogue a bit of an I was idiot, like, right? Is yeah. there, isn't he meant to be kind of? Yeah, he's kind of he's like a wannabe rock star, but he doesn't yeah. actually know how to play the guitar, like that kind of thing. Okay. Um, but it just makes me laugh when I was playing it because I was like, some of this dialogue is like cheesy AF. I don't. But yeah. it's just funny to see the like the different ways it's been discussed. But yeah. I think it's good. I I'm really enjoying it, and I think if you've got Game Pass, you should definitely check it out because I think people will enjoy it. Amazing. I'm thinking about streaming it on Monday, and I'll be interested to see uh, yeah like the comparison between him and Frey. There's mm-hmm. a streamer mode that you have to turn on because I some of the wonder, music yeah. is copyrighted. Like, I think that like the original music that they've developed for the game, which is kind of like the traversal music, like in the areas, is their music so i don't think that's copyrighted but there's a couple of like actual bands yeah. for like um boss fights and stuff that probably will get turned off so it's a bit of a shame that you can't all experience it because twitch will just mute the entire thing mm-hmm. but uh yeah i think it's good great well we'll talk about uh, uh hi-fi rush a bit later on as well in the podcast and i downloaded it last night mm-hmm. and i'm looking forward to maybe giving it a go this weekend i've heard great things and i'm excited by the duration of it that yeah, is very appealing to me i saw that meme where uh bart simpson and martin prince are running for class president mm-hmm. and martin puts a poster up saying a vote for bart is a vote for anarchy and then on the other side of the corridor, Bart is putting up a poster saying, a vote for Bart is a vote for anarchy. And it, it said underneath, um, uh, Hi-Fi Rush is seven hours long. Yeah. And it's like, Hi-Fi Rush is seven hours yeah. long. Mm-hmm. Only seven hours. Hell yeah. Only seven hours. Yeah, but you just read it in a different tone of voice. Yeah. And it's, yeah. yeah. It must be over halfway then. I think I've played about four hours of it. God. Hey. Practically a, 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 a master. A, high, a hippie master. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is that all you've been playing? That's all I've been playing this Fantastic. week. Fantastic. Mm. Well, I, uh, d- despite my protestations last week about the the toughness of the trophy list in Persona 3 Portable, uh, I was away all weekend, came back, stuck the Royal Rumble on, the television, yeah. and I was like, I just want to occupy my brain and my hands with something completely menial. So I continued my high-speed, zero-effort <laughs> male protagonist playthrough of Persona 3 Portable, and I finished it really fast. It didn't take me that... If you're skipping through every day, and as soon as you come home from school, you go to bed, that game's not that long <laughs> in the end. Uh, especially if you do... You can import your save data for, like, a New Game Plus run, and your your level and your uh, recorded personas carry over. So you're basically just, like, a god already in combat, mm. so you don't even need to level up or any or train or right. anything like that. Uh, so I did that, got the bad ending, got the trophy for the... Um, the bad ending means you don't have to do anywhere near as much combat near the end. You can just basically give up, which is great. Is it like selling Stardew Valley to Jojo Mart? Yeah, essentially, yeah. Cool. yeah. You just sort of... The, the path of least resistance, which isn't the, the right way to do it, but my goodness, the credits do roll, and I got the trophy for playing it all the way through with both protagonists. So... Who knows? Maybe I maybe I will go for the platinum in the end. But uh, I, I did run through that. 
Uh, I've played through SpongeBob SquarePants, The Cosmic Shake. That was the game I wasn't allowed to talk about last week because uh, we were under embargo. Uh, there's a full two hour stream of that available on the VODs channel now. I streamed it earlier this week. And alongside Dead Space, which I don't think as many people really care about as SpongeBob SquarePants, The Cosmic Shake, uh, we will be talking about SpongeBob SquarePants, The Cosmic Shake mm. in just a few minutes. Uh, the last thing I've played is Golf Story on the Nintendo Switch, which I have heard great things about because it's a little RPG uh, where you're a wannabe golf superstar and it's presented in a delightful um, sort of, I don't know which bit, art style. Mm. And uh, you level up by being good at golf and there's all sorts of characters in there. It's really fun and I like it a lot and I can see the appeal and I'm glad that I'm finally getting a chance to play it. So that's going to be my new on-the-go game that I take around with me on the mm, Switch nice. um, and play through that. So that is all I've been playing. It's time to move over... Which corner so, is it? Uh, Probably that one over this, there. I think it's that. this corner of the table, isn't it? We just that do it one. here. Oh. Yeah, we stay on this table right here. Oh. Okay, well, we're going to go to the review corner now. We'll see you on the other side. <laughs> So oh, here we go. Ben. Hello. You've been playing SpongeBob SquarePants. The Cosmic the Shake. The Cosmic Shake. Yes, mm. I most certainly have. This was a very exciting one for me to play. Yeah. I was a little bit apprehensive because the I didn't grow up playing SpongeBob games. No. So I'm not nostalgic for them at all. Yeah. And this is brought to us by publisher THQ Nordic. Mm -hmm. And the last SpongeBob game, which was, I think, Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Like re yeah, Rehydrated, yeah. Uh, was also from them. And I was very unimpressed with that game. Right. I wasn't expecting much from this. Mm. But up front, I've got to say, had a really lovely time. Oh, good. It's a great little platformer. It's obviously aimed at children. Yeah. But I think some SpongeBob fans would probably have a good time with it as well. Right. Uh, I'll tell you vaguely what the plot is going into it. Mm -hmm. So SpongeBob and Patrick are going to go to Glove World. They're very excited about it. Glove okay. World. They're wearing their gloves on their heads. They're ready to go. They're mm -hmm. in their attire. They try to make some uh, make, make friends with the cool kids that are at Glove World, but they sort of get shrugged off, which is rude. And I don't know why the cool kids think they're so cool when it's that's SpongeBob SquarePants and Patrick Star. Why wouldn't you want to be friends with them? Yeah, surely. That doesn't make any sense to me. So anyway, in an effort to be more cool, they buy magic bubbled soap from Madame Cassandra's magical trinkets cart, which suddenly appears in front of them. Anything off the trolley, dears. Precisely. Mm. SpongeBob then makes some wishes for all of his friends while blowing the bubbles, but oh no, you're not meant to blow them all at once. Oh. You're meant to use them sparingly, and so he inadvertently rips a hole in the universe that sucks in key bikini bottom locations, residents, um, and landmarks, and Patrick becomes a balloon. Right, okay. For God's sake, SpongeBob... What? He's constantly getting up to these hijinks, isn't he? He is. What a rascal. So Patrick becoming a balloon and following you around works in the sense that he's almost like Sparks from right. Spyro. Mm -hmm. He doesn't collect treasure for you, but he will provide running commentary and just sort of be an ever-present friend for SpongeBob to have with him. Okay. It's a fairly, I would say it's a fairly linear game. You have Bikini Bottom as a hub world mm. and you can, you unlock more areas of it as you progress through the game and then there are several distinct themed worlds so the first one is western themed right there's a movie studio one there's a spooky one mm -hmm. etc you get a different costume for each location you go to and the goal is to rescue the key resident or landmark that has ended up in that location and bring them back into Bikini Bottom properly right. and sort of heal the world. So that that's essentially the gist. You're going from level to level. You're ba you're starting on one end. It's not like a Lego game where it's a huge open environment. You're running through it. There'll be little areas where there's room for exploration. You can jump off the beaten track and find some things. Yeah. But it's not a collectathon either. In that there are little crates that you can smash that will give you jelly, and jelly is sort of the currency which can be exchanged for costumes. Right. But the jelly respawns every time you're in there. So it's not like you're looking to find every single Specific jelly in the jelly level. Bits. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. There are doubloons in each level, these gold coins. There are a finite amount of those in each level. But you're not going to be able to unlock those or find all of those your first time through because you unlock new traversal techniques as you go through the game. So you want to come back. But fortunately, you can reload into these levels really simply because, and you can see how far through the level you are, because each checkpoint you get 
appears on sort of the world map view and you can just warp to any of them at any time. So once you've been okay, in a level, yeah. you can warp. If you're following a guide, for example, to try and collect everything, like the, the gold coins, that is, you could just go to a specific checkpoint that you found. And the traversal itself, the platforming, is actually quite fun. SpongeBob can uh, jump and glide by holding right. X. Uh, he can mantle onto objects that you're pretty close to, which obviously removes a lot of frustration yeah. when you're platforming around and is a huge quality of life tweak over retro platformers from you know 20 years ago or whatever. Mm -hmm. You unlock an ability to blow a bubble at a switch, which will then enable like a platform to, to rise up. Mm -hmm. You get a grappling hook later on. You get a sort of homing karate kick, which not only attacks enemies, but attacks certain objects in the environment. So there'll be bits later on. And it's all very simple. And you will have learned them at a, a gentle pace. Yeah. But you'll be like chaining together these traversal techniques in order to go across, you know, vast chasms. And it feels really satisfying. It's actually really fun. Mm -hmm. And some of the levels, like, there's great verticality as well. Like, you'll get really high up and you can see where you've come from all the way back behind you. It's I was just genuinely surprised right. by how much fun I was having with it. It does have some drawbacks, though, which I'll go into in a second. I'll say the cutscenes are really good, that all the voice actors are there from the show. It references a lot of memes. Um, oh, okay, yeah. Like, you know, the meme pictures of SpongeBob where he's where he like is clucking like a chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he does that as an idle animation okay. quite a lot. It has the hyper-realistic uh, close-ups that Sp the SpongeBob oh, yeah, show used yeah. to have. There's like a few of those, and I ended up screenshotting every single one of them because mm -hmm. they're just so grotesque. There's a dodge button as well, I must say. So it's a Whoa. it's a Souls game now as well. But in terms of issues that I had with it, even though they're underwater, presumably, anytime you even touch water, you will be like teleported out of there. Oh right, yeah, and That's a bit strange. There are some parts of the map where I wasn't close to water where clearly it was just this was designated as water so mm. I'd take one step and it'd be like oh you need to be rescued now which was a bit weird you have to press x to manually continue through dialogue uh, okay. when it's not a cutscene, which can slow things down a little bit yeah and also sometimes you can accidentally skip dialogue yeah. I did that there are of course as is a uh, sort of prerequisite a requirement of platformers a huge there's huge difficulty spikes from time to time right, okay. that just sort of come out of nowhere yeah you know you can get through them after a few tries but it was sort of like that was weirdly difficult and mm. i don't know why that was there the the checkpoints are pretty good though i must say uh, each level sort of has kind of a mini game or two or a distraction or two that's that's unlike anything you've had before so there'll be like a riding section where you're on a seahorse or you've got a grab a drink as it's being slid across the bar at the right time and then mash a button to, right. to drink it. Yeah, But it rarely explains how these things work ahead of time. Often it'll just start a timer and say, right, go! And you're left thinking, what What do you want me to, what am I doing? Like just a little pop-up that explained what you were about to do would be, would be helpful sometimes. Mm -hmm. There's also some missing polish to various aspects like transitional scenes. So for example, SpongeBob and Patrick will step on something at the end of a level and they'll fall through a gap and then it won't cut to them like landing or anything. It'll just be you're now at the bottom and you're starting. Right. It, there's just like weird scenes where it feels like something's missing or it's yeah. not it's not quite finished. And then there were some bugs as well that I did have. There's a fair amount of voiceover that's sometimes cut off or repeats. Like mm -hmm. the first word someone will say will sometimes repeat twice. Towards the end of the game in particular, there were like weird looped sound effects and beds that shouldn't have been there. So I was, for example, in a windowsill. Someone opens the window. SpongeBob gets knocked off it. But the sound of him being knocked off was a sort of like five, like the ambient noise that all the foley and everything mm. was sort of like, let's say, a seven second audio track that was looping throughout their entire conversation until oh. it happened. Like really weird stuff that you would assume can easily be fixed in a yeah. patch. And I rolled credits on it a full week before it came out. So I assumed that that would be fixed. But in my stream earlier this week, day of release, I was still encountering some of those issues. Mm. So it's the takeaway is it's not going to win any awards. And it's a, a little unpolished in places, although I'm confident they could probably fix that. Yeah. But if you're a SpongeBob fan or a child, or you just like colorful platformers, yeah. I think you'll 
you'll be pleasantly surprised by this game. I know I was. Okay. I ended up actually quite enjoying it. Yeah. So, uh, and it's also not the longest game in the world. You'll finish it in probably fewer than 10 hours. Mm-hmm. And then if you want to go back for completionist stuff, then, then it's slightly longer. But you get all sorts of costumes that you can unlock as you go through. And it's just kind of delightful really yeah and i was i was very pleasantly surprised by it okay oh, that's good sounds good thank you very much ben oh you're very welcome i should also say big thank you to uh to dead good pr for sending us the code yes and you. also it's available right now on switch ps4 xbox one and pc wonderful so you can get it there i think now peter mm. it's time to talk about something a bit spookier it is so yes dead space ben mm-hmm. uh it's been remade it has for 2023 the first one Yes, the first one. Uh, remade from the ground up, I believe. Um, and uh, originally the game came out in 2008. Mm-hmm. So uh, I have played the original. I don't think you ever had the pleasure, did you? No, it was w- that was during my um, my coward years. Mm. Um, and uh, I'm a lot better now with spooky games. But at the time, it was an absolute, I'm not going anywhere near this game. Yeah, I remember thinking at the time how it was probably somewhere around my like where the line is i draw Mm. the line at this game because it was very spooky but enjoyably so like there's some horror that i just actively don't like but uh dead space i enjoyed at the time and i've been very much enjoying this remake oh good um for partly for those reasons and and partly for other reasons as well uh so uh i'll I'll hit you with the plot first shall i go on so as you may know having worked in the video games industry for a while Mm. uh you play as isaac clark it's the 26th century. Yes. Um, and you're actually an engineer. So someone who doesn't know much about Dead Space might just assume he's some kind of super soldier or something. He's not. He's just a... He's there. He's just a guy. He's a maintenance man. Um, so you turn up with a crew um, and you're on your way to the USG Ishimura, mm. which is a planet cracker, I believe they call it in the universe. Um, it's a planetary mining ship, basically. So it hovers around like resource-rich planets and like pulls in bits of like asteroid and then those are melted down. So it's okay. a, a mining vessel. Um, uh, but when you get there, there's no comms coming out. You're like signaling for them and they're not replying. You're like, okay, well, let's just go and board. Uh, and on your way in, your ship sort of crashes into the sort of port or whatever the word would be mm-hmm. um, because they're gravity tether or something is broken basically loads of systems are broken on this uh ship to the point that you can can't even safely land on it really so your ship gets a bit smashed up um and then you quickly realize no one's around what's going on Mm. uh we're not getting any response from anyone no one's here to greet us and before long you then encounter these horrible mutant humanoid creatures with great big spikes coming out of their bodies oh dear yeah it's bad there's blood everywhere um, you've literally not seen a single living being. Um, and so that's all very distressing. Yes. Um, Isaac, incidentally, is also there because um, his girlfriend, Nicole, works on this vessel. Right. But, uh, so you're partly there just to see her. And you're obviously at your wit's end all of a sudden thinking, well, she's been on this ship with all of these monsters. So as well as trying to get your ship fixed Mm. uh, and basically just get you and your crew off. You're kind of also desperately hoping you might find Nicole before you leave and be able to rescue her. Um, And as you go around, it becomes apparent that these creatures, some of them are, or or perhaps all of them are essentially undead in some way. So one of your crew gets killed in the first encounter. Spoilers, don't worry. No. Uh, Yeah. Uh, And Kevin, Kevin, it's him. (laughs) And not long after that, uh, another one of your crew who's on the radio in a separate part of the station says, I've just seen Kevin. Uh, Like I've, and he's one of those monsters, but I, I saw him die. So Mm. I know he was dead. Um, And it later becomes apparent that there was someone on this vessel who was really interested in these creatures who are called necromorphs. Right. And he's sort of almost religiously interested. And he thinks like there's there's something to be to be had from studying these like undead mm. beings. So uh, you, as you progress through the game, not only are you trying to survive and trying to get off the ship, but you're also trying to unravel this mystery as to how these things got here. Okay. Um, and what what's this interest in them uh, that these these people seem to have Hmm. so that's basically the plot of the game okay and i think it is worth playing it for the story as much as anything else right um and like the kind of the intrigue and the mystery because i've played horror games in the past where it perhaps just hinges on the scares or Mm -hmm. the atmosphere Mm -hmm. uh, or even just the gameplay 
and you're not necessarily so interested in the story. But um, the, I don't remember actually what happened because I, I played Dead Space when it first released and that's the only time I've ever played the first game. I never played the sequels and that was many years ago. Yeah. And I don't quite remember how it ends. So I am playing it as much as anything else to to get to the conclusion of it. So uh, the narrative I'm, I'm really on board with. Um, but this being a remake, the question is how does it like compare to the yes previous how, how does it look i think it looks really good i don't think it is like mind blowing kind of current gen at its at its best sort of thing okay um i think it looks fine it certainly looks better than the original in terms of the lighting more than anything else i think it's far more atmospheric and i think the necromorphs as well are slightly less i mean they were never cartoony mm. but uh having a bit more photorealism on them and and the way that they move as well yeah. i think makes them seem a little bit more real and a little bit more kind of frightening in that sense yeah. um so i think they've benefited a lot from being brought up to date mm -hmm. um, but it's a classic case really of this game in a way looking like your memories of it you know right. that's what i think a lot of remasters and remakes are aiming to achieve mm -hmm. and it is that kind of feeling of yeah i remember dead space being like really graphically impressive really spooky and, and atmospheric if you go back and play it now yeah i mean it's aged but now this uh this remake kind of puts you back into that that kind of feeling that you you once had that yeah this mm -hmm. is this really spooky graphically impressive game uh, relatively speaking so um gameplay wise you start with a plasma cutter which is actually a, a, again a maintenance tool yes uh, and uh, you do actually pick up proper military grade weapons as you go mm -hmm. um but that's one thing i do like about dead space is that most of your weapons are more sort of mining equipment and things like that which mm -hmm. is quite fun um there's an upgrade system uh, which lets you reset all the, all your upgrades at any time. So you head to these workbenches and you've been collecting nodes as you just explore the uh, the level and you can assign them. They're basically like the points that you would put into an RPG, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but at any point, you can just reset everything that you've done and just create a new build, which is really nice. Right. Um, there is a store um, and uh, much like you'll have become familiar with in the Callisto Protocol, there is currency around the ship and mm -hmm. a few items that are that literally just exist to be sold there's yeah. no point keeping them um and then you spend those credits on uh you can like buy ammo and stuff and okay. and uh, all sorts of things like that um and uh, as well as that there's some interesting mechanics in the uh the the stasis and um oh, i was gonna say kinesis but i've just uh is it called that so there's, uh, I think it's called Kinesis. Uh, in any case, the stasis module allows you to slow down time on certain objects, okay. um, which can be used to uh, get through like doors that are like slamming rapidly that you mm -hmm. can't get through because they've glitched out or they can like be used to solve puzzles as well. Right. So there's a few interesting puzzly bits. Uh, and there's the, I think it's called Kinesis, but uh, whatever it is, it's a... Um, essentially a sort of levitation glove okay um, and again that's for puzzle solving uh moving things around and there are like little nice little offshoots the game is essentially linear mm. in that it it leads you through a story you go from section to section through the station uh using the tram system yeah um and you've always got an objective and there's a button that will actually bring up a, a dotted line on the floor that will always take you to where you need to go so you're never going to get lost which is good um, but there are occasional like little rooms off to the side that you can access if you use your um, special abilities or you can go and mess around with circuit boards and like redirect power from one door to another. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you have to redirect power from like the lights in the room in order to get a door uh, open okay. and then loads of enemies spawn. Right. Um, so that's all great. In terms of like any drawbacks, the only like real complaints I've got is that... Um, Sometimes the game gets a bit too dark and it's not like about a brightness setting. It's that even if you turned your brightness all the way up, it would just be gray instead of black. But right. nothing is actually visible. OK. And I think that's intentional on the part of the developers. I think that's exactly what they're going for in certain areas. But like you have a torch on your gun hmm. and so you can aim down your sight to use a torch and look around a room. 
And all right, in combat encounters, that's quite frantic and, and cool and has the intended effect that you're like, you know, trying to like find the enemy at the other side of the room, like by waving your torch around. But in an area that you're just moving through and you're just like picking up items and uh, perhaps like trying to solve a puzzle, if you just can't see what's going on and you have to like awkwardly stick your gun up and aim your torch in a non like pressing situation yeah it's kind of pointless in that sense like why are you why are you just making it hard for me to see mm. so that's maybe like one complaint um and other than that uh the one thing i did notice is that in a couple of um encounters with monsters there's a lot of like musical stings that will like make you you know go oh it's time combat mm -hmm. you know yeah uh, and you'll hear them like growling and, and roaring as they come at you down a corridor and you'll be like taking down these enemies and then it will go quite quiet because you think the, the combat encounter is over, the music stopped and all the enemies have gone silent. Yeah. And then you might suddenly get hit from behind. And I feel like some of the monsters in this game are way quieter than they were in the original Dead Space. I don't remember ever having the issue where a necromorph would sneak up on me. <laughs> uh, well, maybe they've done that on purpose to catch you out. Possibly, but it doesn't even feel particularly spooky because you're already at high alert because you've been in a combat encounter. Yeah. And then the music stops and you think, oh, that's over. And then like, I'll suddenly get attacked by another one that I've not seen. But it's not been sort of going, rah, rah, coming at me. It's just... It was it's it stopped doing its growl and then it's come and stabbed me and mm. uh, I just kind of think oh okay I mean normally these things make a f massive racket um, and I really shouldn't be having that creeping up behind me I don't think no. like within like in canon in universe I don't think right. they they should be capable of that so that seems like it seems like an oversight it seems like something that wasn't present in the original game it's been mm. a long time and maybe I should have gone back and watched a bit of a playthrough before I uh, had a look at the remake just so I could get a, a very accurate comparison. Mm. Uh, but that's uh, those are the only real issues I've had, like kind of okay. pointless dark set, pointlessly dark sections and uh, occasional very quiet necromorphs. Right. But no bugs, not encountered no any bugs. bugs. That's good. Um, and uh, yeah, it's all, it's all running very well as far as I'm concerned. Looks great, very atmospheric and um, worth, even if you played the original, I think this is worth going back and having another go. It's so far the most fun I've had in a game this year. And it was only Brilliant. January or February. Um, but yeah, a lot of fun. Excellent. Yeah. Well, uh, do you know the platforms it's out on? Yes, it's out on PS5, Xbox Series, and Windows PC, I believe. Um, right now. Right now. And we will, I suspect, be streaming it when we finish Callista Protocol. Yes, we will. Perhaps. You know, we'll be going from from the, the lesser to the greater, I, yeah. would, I would argue. And uh, to be clear, we were not provided a code for this game. We, were, we purchased our own copy. We so. did, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it kind of does make me realize that Callista Protocol does have big shoes to fill and yes this is it's I'm i sure. feel sorry for it because like this is it's not even a new game it's no. a remake but no. it's better the timing is not protocol. ideal at all no. but um, uh, yeah never mind. Well. right let's go back to the podcast hmm. time for question two ash john it is it comes from dynasties or dynasties edge dynasty dependent how you want to say it um, hey there, Sooty Sweep and Sue. First time question submitter and finally a first time Patreon able to give a little something back to all Thank your wonderful you. content right. for all your wonderful content that helped me so much mentally. And yes, my thing is going to see how many old school TV characters Ashton might have heard of. I've heard of Sooty Sweep and Sue. Of course. We played Trivial Pursuit at the weekend and mm -hmm. I named them all. Nice. So Scampy. Sucky. Cousin Scampy. I didn't know. Bodger and Badger. Yeah. Um, as for my question, have you gone into any video game for the first time already knowing a key plot point reveal, twist, or character revelation? Revelation, even. Excuse me. <laughs> um, if so, did it affect your playthrough at all, knowing key plot points that are meant to be eventual surprises beforehand? I currently have a situation with my first playthrough of Persona 4 Golden. I already know who the mystery antagonist is thanks to seeing them in various memes and discussion posts before I, go, before I got into the series, and that Im image of them somehow... And that image of them somehow always seemed to stick with me. So while I know the big reveal is coming, I luckily still don't know why they're the villain, and interacting with them in the game does add some more backstory, de um, backstory depth to my playthrough. Knowing what I... Uh, oh, sorry. Knowing what I know. So there's still many positives for me to gain from this key knowledge. Thanks again for providing us with all the good times. It's really good for the soul. Giles, a.k.a. Dynasty's Edge. Thank you, Giles. Thanks, Giles. Thank you, Giles. I knew, having worked in the 
get on a video gaming channel uh, for some time before playing the game, I knew all about The Last of Us and its ending before I went into it. The first one. The first one. The first and um, I like still had a really good time with that game. Uh, I'm sure it probably would have hit way hard. Well, I don't know how much harder it would have hit because like the the fact is like the emotional wrench is not so much in the surprise as the fact that it's happening right in front of you. So even if you know it's going to happen, to actually sit there and experience it, it's a it's like going back and playing the game again, which I think we've all done at some point, either mm. the the uh, remaster or the remake or whatever. Um, you still get a gut punch watching it happen. So I still very much enjoyed that game. And yeah, all right, maybe there was a certain element of surprise in there that I was missing, uh, but it it absolutely still hits. Um, I, uh, I also, I've never played Knights of the Old Republic, um, which mm. I'd really like to do, um, at some point. And maybe if they ever manage to do this remake, uh, yes. I'll give that a go. I wonder whether they're going to handle the story the same. I think they probably will do. I think it would be a bit too subversive to actually change. Like it's one of the like biggest or, or most celebrated plot twists in gaming history, I think. Um, but, uh, most of the reason I've not played that is because I've just never got around to kind of sitting down and giving it a go. And I, the only way I have access to it at the moment is on PC. Uh, and uh, I don't like to sit and play PC games if I can help it. I'd rather be on the sofa. Um, and also, I did once try to play it on PC, and the Steam port was just broken, and the menu, the front menu, did not work. Uh. And I booted up the game, and it 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 just presents you with the menu and no selection reticle or anything so you just can't right. see a new game Love that's that. good bad port um i think they've since fixed that but uh, i've not yet gone back to give it a go and at this point yeah i'll probably wait for the remake uh but yeah knowing what the big twist in that game is is a bit of a shame because that is one that i don't think you would see coming and it's quite a crucial one as well mm. um so maybe maybe my experience in that game will be a little lacking um in a sense but Who's to say? I'll have to find out when I play the game eventually. Mm. But yeah, The Last of Us is one that it did happen uh, to me and it was okay. So I know something that's going to happen in Final Fantasy VII and mm. um, I had a hunch and then accidentally a little while ago, Kieran confirmed it for me when we were doing a list. He asked me a question about it and I said, what are you talking about? And then he was like, oh. So Kieran was actually quite devastated by this yeah. because he talked to me about it on the way home from work. Yeah. Oh no. And I was honestly shocked that you were unaware it's like the most famous just, i've never played it and i, I know just what didn't happened. yeah well i think i just i had like I, i'd seen my boyfriend play it through like the original version of mm. the game mm. and i'd seen what happened happen but i just didn't kind of put two and two together when i was playing it that's her from the one i've played yeah i just kind of was like because i hadn't obviously didn't play it until way after he played this and i was like just kind of hadn't put it together and I had a hunch but I didn't mm, like mm -hmm. I didn't want to confirm it because I didn't want to know I presume we're talking about a surprise death yeah or not big surprise yeah it's yeah. weird now that we're talking about it in the context of this question it seems strange to discuss but we've spoken about it openly yeah. on this podcast I think it's because before. it's obviously like currently coming out again and mm. it's kind of like people are having to wait that I feel like I don't want to ruin it for people mm. like me who've managed to that is incredible by the way very impressive thank you thank you so much um, 26 years yeah at least <laughs> Since that yeah. game came out. Um, but, you know, for for like 15 of those, I was a child. So. Yeah, that's true. Um, a child. A child. But yeah, I so I found that out recently, like confirmed. And I was like, oh, that's sad. So now whenever I kind of see the character in like Crisis Core, the women were playing it and the like when I was playing it through, I was like, mm, it's just sad. I don't know when it's going to happen. And I'm kind of like on edge. And I'm like, what's gonna? Ha when's it gonna happen? Mm. When's it coming? What's gonna happen? That's the thing with knowing things ahead of time. If you don't know when they're gonna happen, yeah. I mean, with with mine, I knew it was at the end, and it's like the climax of the thing. But yeah, yeah sometimes someone will just tell you, oh, that bit when that person betrays the others, mm. and you're like, what? When? What? When's that? And hmm? you, then you're waiting with bated breath all the way through. Yeah. I'm not entirely convinced it is gonna happen in this remake oh. trilogy. You don't think? No, I wow. think I think that they are. The, the end of part one was basically them saying, okay, now pretty much anything could happen. Right. Um, so who knows? It is one of the, as we've said, 
biggest moments yeah. in all of video games. So yeah, exactly. They might feel like they can't not, but equally, I right think with, uh, uh, Nice the Old Republic. I think yeah, yeah, exactly. They can't. But maybe they will. I maybe think they. they I think they can. I think they can do it if they if they do it the right way. But maybe it will happen. And when it does happen, I'll be surprised. The same way that actually I was surprised about the Honeybee Inn scene um, yeah. when that happened. Mm -hmm. That I, you know, I'd heard that I was. Ex everyone was excited for me to get to that bit, <laughs> but like I didn't know why until it happened, and I was like, "Wow, this is great! I'm having a great time." Um, but yeah, that's the one thing that having played through the games, I'm like, "Well, no." When is it gonna? When is it happening? And I don't want to play the next one now because I just like maybe if I just live in like, mm. you know, Schrodinger's cat, it Schrodinger's death, it, and I just won't, won't play the game, and then it will never happen. Mm. You know, that's true. Um, and also I knew what was gonna happen in Life is Strange. Um, I knew what the choices were at the end, and in order to, <laughs> I did never make the choice. I just didn't finish the game. <laughs> I got to the point where it was that's like it. make the choice, and I thought, Do you know what? Actually, I'm all right. I don't need to make this choice right now. And then you never did. And I never did. Oh, wow. Um, because I already knew what was going to happen either so way. So end. I was I'm like... I'm a bit like that. I've been watching a TV show recently and on season three it ended with everything was like a lovely happy ending because I don't think they knew if they were going to get commissioned for mm. one more season. And then they did. And I'm like... I don't want to watch the fourth one because <laughs> yeah, things will go back. Because I know I think the fourth one ended up ending on a cliffhanger because yeah. they thought they might get season five and then that's it. And it just yeah. ends like that. So I'm like... I don't know if I want to watch that. Yeah. It's all happy now. It's like whenever I watch a Grey's Anatomy episode, I'm like, well, everything's good. So I won't watch the next episode because someone might die. And yeah. I just don't feel like I want to go through that. Um, so, yeah, those are the big ones that I kind of know about and have played through the games. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I've also written down KOTOR. Uh, because mm. In fact, I only learned about that that twist recently. Oh, really? I had really? managed to avoid that for a very long time until... We're putting together our next 101 uh, big uh, long yeah. list, uh, which is bit of biggest moments in games or, or something along those lines. It's got a better title. Unforgettable. Than that. Moments. Unforgettable moments. Thank you. No uh, and that was part of one of my chunks of entries. And I was like, well, it's time for me to find out what this spoiler is that mm. I'm aware there's a big right. twist, but I, I've managed to somehow avoid it this whole time. And now I do know what it is. And I feel like. I am probably going to have a lesser experience because of it, mm. uh, naturally. But I, it won't stop me from playing the game if the remake is any good, of course. Uh, it seems okay, to be having exists. some problems at the moment. Yeah. Uh, the other big one is actually also a, a Last of Us game, and it's The Last of Us Part Two, because there were some real clever clogs running around on the internet before the game came out, just spreading spoilers like wildfire. And we were maybe a week from release, Peter and I were playing Minecraft on stream. Someone came in with the spoiler as their username oh. so that when they were banned, it said spoiler has been banned, but everyone could still see their name in the chat. So it was just... What a jackass. Just like weapons grade penis man. I remember that happening. I'm trying to remember what the, which, which plot point it was. Was it just like... It was something very that happens early quite on. early on. Yeah, yeah. something that happens. Uh, right, okay. So I yeah. was naturally furious. I, think I assumed that was going to happen anyway, but yeah. well, I didn't. Oh, like didn't I, you? I was, I was furious. We like, didn't I was, know anything that was going to happen. I was really cross about that, and uh, I messaged my friend out of frustration. He was like, "Don't worry, I've also had a spoiler. Uh, what is it?" And I, I said vaguely what it was, and he was like, "Oh, don't worry, I've heard a worse one than that. That happens way later. Apparently, this happens right near the start of the game." And I was like, "Okay, that makes me feel a little better, but I'm still." It's still it's like so sad, man. Oh, it yeah. sucks. Like, why would you do that? You know, why would what pleasure does that does that bring a person? Mm -hmm. um, it it didn't it didn't ultimately impact my enjoyment of that game at all. But obviously, I would much rather play through the first few hours without that knowledge hanging over me, yeah. knowing it's it's coming up soon. Mm. Um, yeah, such a God, people suck. <laughs> people really people suck. suck. Uh, but that was that's, I think, the only example I have of, of something being spoiled for me before the game had even launched. Um, every every other time I've played through a game that I've been aware vaguely of the themes or big twists uh, has just been because the game's been out for ages. So yeah. people naturally will be talking about it. And doing lists is a big way to find out about all sorts of plot points. Like yeah. our, our job, that's where a lot of my spoilers have come from. Yeah, like, same. Not... Not t doesn't tend to be like social media stuff. Maybe nowadays it, it, you do see more stuff on Twitter with like recent releases. But yeah, for a, a long time, mm. all the major spoilers I was getting, like KOTOR and, and, and The Last of Us, I think, 
was probably from covering it in lists. Mm. Um, Kotor got spoiled to me by my boyfriend because he said, oh, you'll never play this. Uh, so I just want to talk to you Because he was like, oh, there's a game that you'll probably never play because it's a bit difficult to play nowadays and, you know, they're not going to remake it. And then he explained to me what the story was and the twist. And then, then about like four years later, I was mm. like, well, well, well. <laughs> now he looks happened. like a jackass. <laughs> Uh, it's time for something a little weird. A bit peculiar, hey? News. Weird, weird news. news. Weird news time. Time for some weird video game news. If you would like to send us some weird news, you can do so on Twitter and Facebook under the relevant posts that go out near the start of the week. If you would like to guarantee a shout out at this point in the podcast, however, you need to go to patreon.com forward slash team triple jump and support us at a certain tier and become a podcast producer. Yes. Here's some podcast producers. Hey, thanks. Big thanks. Thanks to Nathan. Big thanks, thanks to G.Y. Goliath. A slightly smaller thanks, thanks, but still a significant thanks, thanks to Nexus Polaris. Whoa, not nice. <laughs> uh, also to Duncan Wilson. <laughs> to Nicole Hansen. Ellie Nicholas. Gabrielle Philippink. Melody Albonet. And Katie Garrett. Katie Garrett. Slash I just, Jared. Slash Jared. I, uh, I just feel like Nathan only has one... Just his one name, and yeah. he's at the top of the list, and so it's just Nathan. Do you are Goliath? Like Nathan gets half a second every yes. every week, so I just wanted to give him big thanks, thanks. Yeah, big Nathan's thanks, Nathan's. Thanks. Nathan's, yeah. Nathan's uh, Nathan. Fantastic, thank you, podcast producers. You got some weird news there, Peter. Yeah, it was sent in by Jonathan Wong, who uh, has sent us a link to GoNintendo.com. Oh, GoNintendo.com. <laughs> it's written by. Raw Meat Cowboy. I refuse to believe. I almost swore then. That that is your birth name, Disgusting. Mr. Cowboy. No, it's, it's all one word. It's Raw some meat. sort of username. So I guess maybe you could just create an account, a user account, and just write any old rubbish on GoNintendo.com. Maybe not, but why not just use your personal name? <laughs> anyway, according to Raw Meat Cowboy, mm. <laughs> Super Mario Pizza Line launching in Germany next month. Oh, Lord Brotovich, cool. can you send us one? The subheading is Mamma Mia, that's a spicy pizza. <laughs> oh, no, I nearly swore at that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's some imagery. I don't know if that's official. Uh, I think it might oh, be. Oh, I don't like the color cup. They look like sweets. The packaging yeah, makes it look like bright. they're sweets. No, it's like sweet pizzas. They're like yeah. nerds mm. or something. Mm. Yeah. Don't like him. <laughs> As we. As we, the Super Mario Bros. animated movie from Nintendo and Illumination draws closer. So Is this translated start. from German, start. you think? I don't think it's translated from German, no. Oh. As there aren't any Raw Meat Cowboys Cowboy. in Germany. I think it's just a typo. As okay. we, the Super Mario Bros. Yes. <laughs> animated movie from Nintendo and Illumination draws closer. Mm. Companies uh -huh. are scrambling to cash in on the hype in any way possible. While that's resulted in all sorts of toys and merch so far, fans in Germany can look forward to a tasty treat arriving soon. Mm. Freiburger is a company known for producing all kinds of pizzas, not burgers or fries, and their <laughs> latest creation is a collaboration with Nintendo. Both a Mario and Luigi and a Wario and Waluigi, uh, yeah, Wally, Wario and Waluigi pizza, what? <laughs> Wario, are in the works, and they'll officially launch in Germany on the Feb on February the sixth, twenty twenty three. With the Mario and Luigi pizza, you can expect a spicy mixture of chorizo, salami, and spicy Calabrese style salami cubes for a triple salami explosion. Wow, that's a, a lot Limey. of salami on that. Yeah, it is. Goodness. All uh, the sausage. <laughs> as for Wario and Waluigi, the four cheese deluxe combines mozzarella, red cheddar. Red cheddar. Redder. Uh, Emmental. Is it like red Leicester? Yeah, well, that's what I think. Is I've never heard of red cheddar. Redder. <laughs> Emmental and Gorgonzola topped with sweet sprinkles, which is capitalized. No, no I don't like no, that. No, I don't want sweet sprinkles. No, you sprinkles can leave those off. We cheese. made that main menu. It wasn't good. Sweet sprinkles, both. It's like two capital S's, like it's some sort of. Branded. Brand, drink. yeah. Mm. Um, those in Germany looking to snag these pizzas will be able to pick them up at Ruhr, e Edeka, Aldi Nord and Sud, Globus, Netto, and Penny stores. Thanks to Johannes for the heads up, it says. Thanks, Johannes. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Johannes. Johannes. Um, sweet sprinkles. I don't want sweet mm. sprinkles on my four cheese pizza. No, mm. I don't know about that. Mm. I don't know about that. Bet it's crap. 
but we'd still like to try it. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I bet it's bad, but please, someone send. That's that gonna song. be someone's gonna put these in a the freezer for like thirty years and then pull them out yeah. and sell them on eBay for six million dollars. Mm-hmm. That's a good idea. I should do that. Or we could <laughs> fly eat to it. Germany. We could Get very one. carefully take it out of the box, eat it. And then put the box on display. And then periodically replace it with another one and try and sell it. Like yeah, exactly. It's just a regular pizza. Just buy one Sweet of those sprinkles small, on it. plain margaritas, mm-hmm. put yeah. loads of salami on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stick it in. And there. hundreds and thousands. Yeah. yeah. I have some news. Yeah. It's from PC Gamer by Ted Litchfield. Um, MMO player grinds god awful minigame tokens for eight years, breaks in game XP tracker by blowing it all in 49 seconds. <laughs> the bit? Question mark. Committed to. Okay. First reports by Games Radar. Uh, first reported by Games Radar, an old school RuneScape player with the handle NC State, presumably not official re- representative of the Rayleigh based university, finally sought his reward for grinding an infamous minigame, the Brimhaven Obstacle Course, for eight years. As outlined oh by a friend, user Hodgepodge on Reddit, NC State finally bought his journey home, turning in all of his banked rewards at once and gaining 178 million XP in RuneScape suboptimal <laughs> agility skill in less than a minute. This was such a rapid influx that the game's built in experience per hour tracker couldn't keep up. It tapped out at 2.14 billion even though the NC State was progressing at a rate of 10.8 billion per hour. God, Jesus Christ. Um, ability in RuneScape, agility in RuneScape is not exactly the long-running MMO's sexiest skill. It's associated with cool rogue stuff like graceful outfit in-game, but mechanically it just gives you more stamina and lets you access assorted shortcuts throughout the map. One of the primary ways you can level up this is Brimhaven's Agility Arena, a kind of skill vendor minigame. Um, and then it just talks about what is RuneScape. Well, ah, what is RuneScape? What are um, thoughts? To hear NC State describe it doesn't actually sound that bad at all. I do want to add that Brimhaven is a leisurely place, or at least it can be, if you do ob- if you don't do obstacles while you wait. He explained in response to El Miko, who would estimate the, pro- the project required a ballpark 4,800 hours. <laughs> Many times you're watching YouTube, reading news, browsing the web, etc. I was almost never on my computer for the sole purpose of doing agility, but I almost always had RuneScape up whenever I was on. Wow. So less of a raw will and endurance, more patience and commitment. I don't know why he did it. Uh, and then there's some like maths about agility stats and stuff, but it's boring. Um, but yeah, so he did an obstacle course I, for I eight years straight. I wonder why he did it. I wonder why, like at what point did he think, now is the time I yeah. get in? Yeah. After eight years. Why not go to 10? Like, make yeah. it a decade. Mm-hmm. Well, we we'll never know. It, it, maybe we just had enough. We Did I say who better. sent that in? I don't think I don't did. I think you did, no. It was uh, Johnny Mac at Johnny Mac 13 on Twitter. Johnny Mac. Sorry, Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. I turned the page and I just forgot. My news is from Jerka38 or Jerka38 at Jurika Lucchini on Twitter. Hmm. But maybe. Bojack Horseman avatar. Just search that on Twitter. <laughs> uh, this is from Kotaku and the master of weird news, Luke Plunkett. Yes. Huge Dong makes appearance during streaming awards show. Cool. Huge Dong? Huge. Who's that? Huge Dong. Spanish streamer the, Gre- the Grefke is one of the biggest stars on Twitch, so much so that he recently held his own awards show that drew almost 2 million viewers. And everyone Jesus. was everyone watching was, for a moment, treated to a big old ASCII penis. <laughs> Close this video. First, some background. The Grefke has almost 20 million YouTube subscribers, over 11 million Twitch followers. Even if you don't know who he is because he doesn't speak your language, the dude is one of the most popular streamers on the planet. Wow. Oh. Uh, do, 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 do. let's just walk past that bit. The event we're talking about today, called Premios Esland, is actually the second year running that he's been able to host his own awards show specifically for Spanish-speaking streamers, streaming and related events slash stunts. And it's quickly become a huge event. Stunts. Yes. <laughs> this year's show drew 1.75 million viewers, and that's not counting the folks in attendance watching it live. And then there's a video of the people there all going crazy. Uh, anyway, being the second time he's run one of these shows and that he lives on the internet, you might think he or his producers would know not to cut to the live chat on the big screen up on stage. Yet this year he did just that. And as you can see in the video below, he regretted it about as quickly as a human can register the sensation. I don't know if you've seen the... Have you seen the video? No. I saw the article headline, okay. but I've not watched the video. It's 
So he's waving it away. As soon as he saw it, and then he just sort of puts his hand on his mouth like, oh, no. <laughs> he looks like he, he didn't even see the funny side to that. He was just like, no, no that needs to come down. Uh-oh, take, uh-oh. The, take the chat down. So there's the photo. I think it's an Among Us with a with an oh, a, wow. with okay. a gigantic <laughs> that is like dongus. That is not the kind of penis I expected. I thought it would just be made out of just you oh, know the kind of the basic an stuff. An eight and then like a bunch of equals. Yeah. Well, no, no. I thought it would be like a big one, yeah. but like just like a cartoon. Not that detail. No. Yeah, exactly. Right. That not was as veiny as that one. It's is. quite artful, actually. When you th- when you really examine it, now it's I can quite see beautiful. Why he was upset by. It. Uh, so, if you're unfamiliar, ASCII art is basically art that Pete. You will have seen it on the internet if you're not familiar with the term. It's 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 people being able to put together drawings out of symbols that you can access on your keyboard, mm. basically, and not just equals d or no. or less than three it's it's you know like a big old wall of stuff and mm. people can do quite comprehensive drawings in it this person did a dig old bick and uh luke plunkett underneath just says ha and that's the end of the article <laughs> of course he does. so there we are Thanks, Luke. I Dong think they let Luke just write what he wants. Oh, no yeah, way. honestly, he Rightly does. So. He and does. As, he, as, he really as he should does. be allowed to. He really mm. does. Uh, well, there we are. That's weird news. Thank you for everyone for submitting your weird news. It's time for another question. Mm. This question comes from Jens Herman, who says, Hi there. The new Harry Potter game is coming out soon, and people are discussing whether or not they should buy it. Not because of the game's quality, but because the creator of the franchise has become quite quite of a dick in recent years. Mm. Uh, do you think it's okay to boycott a game because you don't like the creator of the franchise? Or would that be unfair for the people who actually worked on the game? Let's not forget that the working conditions in the gaming industry are not the best. Kiss, kiss, and bye. Um, if Thank you just yes. allow me to open this can of worms oh, right now. Very careful good. with those worms, Peter. Mm. They're, They're going delicious. all over the place. Oh, They're blimey. everywhere. Worms all over the place. Uh, thank you, Jens, for this thank question. Thank you. Mm. So, I mean, this the the worst thing about this topic is that no matter what your opinion is, whether you like think that well, th- th- there's two obvious sides to the argument, and whether you like extreme one side, extreme the other, or like somewhere in the middle, uh, you the moment you open your mi- mouth about it on the internet, mm. you upset a proportion of people, um, either because they think you are. SJW cucks, mm. or they think you are turf transphobes. Um, like, so for example, um, you know, we we choose to uh, be respectful of trans people, and uh, you know, we're very well aware that J.K. Rowling has said some things that have upset a lot of trans people, and 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 had done some actions as well um, that have upset that community, and so our choice is to. Uh, I don't speak for all of us, but uh, we've decided to like not really cover this game particularly uh, a, a great mm. amount. Mm. Um, and Ashton uh, rightly m- mentioned that the game is being released this uh, this month on the forecast because we all agreed that, well, it should be in the forecast. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's all you said. And just by even saying the game's coming out, trans women are women, some people are upset with you for being political or mm. why should we bring politics into gaming why are you well we did not babe we weren't we didn't bring this up first no. we're just acknowledging what's happening so, calm down calm down hun it's okay so if you hadn't noticed i'm like not really answering the question here i'm just sort of saying it's very difficult to even talk about this even saying what i deem to be the right thing because uh you there's, there's just two very, very loud sides of this argument. Yeah, to... we, we've yeah. all got a platform yeah. and we've got to use it responsibly for what we think is right. And we're doing that. But it's still a difficult thing to talk about, even if we are, if, even if we stick to our convictions, because mm. even by virtue, as Peter said, of opening our mouths, we just open ourselves up to a lot of harassment. And that is not justified harassment obviously and uh it we would rather speak up than be quiet yeah it's and, not a reason not to and face the harassment but yeah. even so it's still it it still gives pause for thought and mm. it's still a difficult situation to discuss because of that fact and it's yeah. not because we don't support trans women <laughs> to no. be clear no uh but yeah it's it's just a tricky thing to talk about because people get so bloody cross yeah. if you if you say anything negative about uh about this game and it's, yeah. it's something that is clearly plaguing 
loads of outlets at the moment who you know we're all trying to like run businesses here this is how we pay our bills and keep our lights on and i think everyone is is trying to find the balance between it's going to be a huge game yeah it's going to be a huge game so there's an a, a massive argument to say, well, we, you should cover it objectively and say, this is a game. This is its level of quality. Mm. Um, keep in mind that like JK Rowling is in some way attached to it and will probably be earning royalties from it. Vote with your wallets. That's one way of doing it. Or you can choose to not mention that situation at all and just say, this is a good or a bad game. Or you can choose not to cover the game at all and say, I don't want to touch that game because of the situation. Mm. And uh, all of those things are gonna factor into uh, principally whether you uh, are, are working in solidarity with people who you should be working in solidarity with, I think. Uh, but then also uh, there's the, the business aspect to it as well. And you don't wanna like, you have to, you have to think about how you weigh those things up. Mm. As you say, Ben, it's more important to stick to your convictions and say mm. trans women are women and J.K. Rowling has said some like really offensive stuff, uh, rather than just kind of keep quiet about it and say, "Oh well, we'll just talk about the game, not touch on the controversy because we want to pay our bills." Yeah, I think that specifically like this question of the debate of, but what about the developers? Yeah, is something that that bothers me in the sense that like. My morals should not have to be compromised because the gaming industry does not respect the people that work for them. Like this this game, if this game is bad, if this game is objectively a bad game and it comes out and it sells badly because it is a bad game, these developers will still be punished because the gaming industry does not treat these developers with respect of the work that they put in and maybe they'll get sacked or the studio will go under because it's such a cutthroat industry of like, well, you've not made us enough money, you're done. Like that's not a good thing. That's the issue with the industry. The issue isn't that the consumer who has certain beliefs and morals is deciding to boycott a game because of something that's associated with it. Like, that's not on your individual person because I'm under no no illusion that less people will buy this, like that this game will do badly because people are not buying it because of the situation. Mm. I think this game is going to do well. I think that it will sell well and it probably will do well, you know, in the awards if it's a good game. We don't even know if it's a good game yet. No, we don't. But um, I'm under no illusion that me not buying the game or me not talking about the game will make a significant difference, but it is my personal morals that I will not buy the game. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's the argument that I have is that you can do whatever you want, but I know that for me, I'm not even, I don't want to touch it because I don't, I'm not interested in it because of what's associated with it. It will be tainted for me regardless, even if I did play it, I'd still always be tainted with the idea of who has created this game. Mm. But I do think that the issue is not with the consumer, it's with the industry and the way that it is formed and the way that, that developers are expected to work and be constantly on edge that they'll lose their job if the game doesn't perform well. Yeah. Like that's an industry, that's an issue within the industry. It's why people need to unionize, mm -hmm. you know, get like things together so that we can kind of make things better for the developers who are, you know, suffering in the way that they have to work and the crunch and the, the way that they are abandoned if the game doesn't do well. That's an issue that should be dealt with internally and it's not, just specific to this game but that's the argument people keep bringing up like oh what about the devs but that shouldn't necessarily even have to factor in because if your movie does badly like if you're an actor and your movie does badly they're not going to be like you'll never act again how dare you it's not your fault it's What's just the... that everything else around it hasn't gone well some people also say what about the devs like in in the sense that well I want to support them financially. And that, like, I'm happy to have a debate with someone uh, who's who's more on the, I'm going to buy this uh, game side of the fence. If, like, with, with certain points, some people might say, I like to separate art from artists or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. And if that's something you want to say, I'm happy to, like, have a discussion about that. And, like, you know, the, there's arguments either way. But to say, um, I want to buy this game so that I can pay the developers because they've worked hard on it. 
I think that point is irrelevant because yeah. they've been paid you're not paying they've yeah, been it paid a wage. It doesn't make so, sense. Yeah. They 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 will have been paid for their work. And yeah. as Ashton says, the only the only two ways they stand to lose out are nothing that that any consumer should be responsible for. Mm. Either the game there, there's a performance based bonus in terms of review scores not yeah. being high enough, which is nothing to do with the consumer, or it doesn't sell very well. And we all know it's going to sell really well. Mm. So ultimately, this this does just come down to a personal decision. And some people are extremely furious that people would even consider boycotting for such a reason. Mm. Some people are obviously just trolling and being nasty and deciding using to... Using it as a platform to be nasty. Yeah, using it as a platform yeah. to be nasty and saying, I'm buying it to support JK Rowling. I'm buying Rowling. 10 like, copies. Okay, just to well, screw trans people. Sure, yeah. you, you do that if you want, mm. I suppose. Uh, there is obviously a lot of people... Uh, I think we all know people who are probably going to buy this game and they're not transphobes. They're just, they like video games and they like Harry Potter and they want to play this. But that's ultimately, you know, that that's their decision. And mm -hmm. that's, that's okay. You know, you can't control what people are or aren't going to do. As Peter said, we've decided ultimately that we're not going to pretend it doesn't exist, but we're, we're not going to give it oxygen like free um, press yeah and other outlets will cover it because they feel they have to and no judgment on them really uh it's it's up to you if you want to judge them and if you want to still support that site or not or or not support that site it's it's such a difficult issue uh purely in the sense of covering it as far as we're concerned it's a pretty cut and dry issue really mm. uh but the the separating the art from the artist thing is it's it's becoming more and more prevalent as more and more creative people are sort of revealed to not be very nice people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you could still go and see their movies at the cinema. You could still watch their movies on Netflix if you want using the movie argument. But some people don't want to do that. And that's OK. Mm -hmm. You know, that's it's it's ultimately it's all a personal decision. But the the argument about supporting the developers, I don't think that. If that you, really holds much. If you were that worried about supporting people that work on games, you would buy every single game that ever came out because someone has worked on that game. Mm. Like, I know that obviously mm. this is like an, you know, an all or nothing situation, but if your whole thing is like, I'm buying it s solely to support the devs, do you buy every single game to support the devs? Like every game that's ever come out? Because there's games that won't perform well and they're just unproblematic. Like there's no issue with them. But, you know, did you buy Forspoken to support the devs? Because you knew that people weren't necessarily buying it. But that's the whole thing of, like, I'm only doing it to support the devs. Like, you're not. You're doing it because you want to play the game. And that's fine. Like, mm. that's okay. Just admit that. Like, you don't have to lie and be like, it's just it's just for the devs. That's the only reason I'm playing it. I'm not going to tell you off. I'm not going to be like, scumbag. Yeah, that's How the thing. How dare you? I think the, 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 whole, the whole problem with this entire topic is that it comes down. It, it's being presented as such a black and white issue. And it's like not by everyone hopefully mm. like there are sensible people out there who can see the the kind of the nuance and the, there are there the are shades some of gray yeah mm -hmm. the, exactly the shades of gray um and you know it's not that you're either um uh, a transphobe or a an sjw cuck whatever <laughs> like yeah. you know yeah um and likewise you know you can have the all or nothing argument where i see, i've seen people saying oh well if you think that you shouldn't buy this game because you want to make a like a moral choice and say I'm not supporting this then why then you can't ever buy an Activision game ever again or an Ubisoft game mm -hmm. uh, or or a Rockstar game because of either workplace um you know like crunch or Sexism. harassment uh, yeah, or, yeah all those sorts of things and all right I mean there's an argument to say well yeah if you want to look at those issues and and also say I'm not going to support this company then rightly so but then I've seen people just taking it. It's like a straw man argument where they're saying, well, you shouldn't have a phone. Um, Listen, you can never like be completely morally. In Africa. Um, you can never be no. completely morally perfect. And that's like, you know, something that we will have to be aware of. But you have to just pick your battles. Yeah. And I, I don't think I've ever seen a game be this toxic. Like yeah. the, the discussion no, about horrible, around it man. be this toxic. And it's exhausting for for us to cover. But ultimately, in the grander scheme of things, it's it it has been regardless of whether or not it's justified it has been this game has been turned into a debate about uh, uh about trans people and and their right to exist and while it's kind of ridiculous that it has reached that point however it's reached that point uh we are f now forced to make this decision as to whether or not we can ethically mm -hmm. cover it or and a lot of other 
players are now being forced to to juggle whether or not their interest in the game overrides their ethical uh, standing. And yeah. that's a difficult position for anybody to be put in, but it is the situation we find ourselves in. And I just, I mean, I'm just flipping tired of hearing about this game at this yeah. point. So, uh, I, hope, I hope it's a bad game. Really? Yeah, because it just means that like everyone would just shut up. Like if it's a, if it's an objectively bad game, like if the open world is buggy and bland and boring, and the game doesn't work, then brilliant, brilliant, because we can all just move on and we mm. can all be like, well, <laughs> that game At was least then bad, everyone can agree it's and we bad. can all agree it's bad, and we can all agree that it was a waste of everyone's time and energy to argue about it mm. because it was a bad game. Whereas That's if what it's I'd good, like. You'll, but you even still if have it's the divided camp, even if like, it's good, like it's forever going to be marred by this, this yeah, situation. It but be. it is watched, just like I, I saw like ten minutes of footage of it yesterday because um, some people have been watch, uh, doing early uh, an early access thing. Yeah, mm. and there were some like kind of buggy things in there where someone was flying around. And they'd like flown quite far away from the area. They were at like a live event, physical event, like mm. hands on. And they'd flown away from where they were supposed to be. And they like landed down on this hut on the side of a lake or something. And um, as they landed, there was no one there. And then like suddenly like four NPCs just kind of faded in. They'd like loaded in. They were just like background NPCs right. playing a game or something. But so, and you know, that that's like... I don't know what build that was, yeah. and yeah, but um, so it might just turn out to be rubbish. And you're right, Ashton, that at least if it's bad, then everyone could just agree, oh, this game's not worth buying. But yeah. I mm. think if it's good, you're right that like that doesn't necessarily mean, but like if it's good, then you have some people are still defending it. Oh, you missed it, out on it, not. losers. Yeah. So mm. it would Did be I? easier for everyone if it turns out to be terrible. Mm. Yeah, I I don't necessarily want it to be bad as I don't such want it to because be. I, no. I hope people who really are excited for this game and, you know, are reasonable people, <laughs> I'm sure, uh, will enjoy it. But it's just it's been turned into a symbol and it's it's been put on this pedestal and unfortunately We've all got to grapple with the ethical implications of that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the developer's choice, of course. It's not uh, even flipping Warner Brothers' choice necessarily. But through the through, I t I don't know. I'm just so tired. You're I'm right, so yeah. tired of the conversation we, around it now. Yeah, like but we, because of where it is, and because of the platform it's now on, and what it's being, it, it, a battle is being fought over this game. Yeah, and we have to. We feel like we have to pick a side, and. Uh, it's it's tricky when when you're put in a position like that when it involves medium uh, media sorry and especially a medium that you cover professionally, uh, but you know we we're we're confident in the choice that we're making at least. Mm -hmm. That's the thing in having to pick a side as well is that you are, I think unlike really any game that I can think of that's ever come out is that this is now you know we talk about black and white or all or nothing, your decision to buy this game or not. In, in the minds of so many people is being tied directly to the debate. Yeah. And there have been games in the past that might have been controversial. And if you choose not to buy it because you're like, I don't like that studio, mm. or if you choose to buy it because you really like the game, that's fine. But some people aren't even aware of said controversy and they're just buying it based on whether, you know, whatever, their, their usual decision-making process. Mm. And that's fine. And it's not like every single person who did or did not buy, this, buy said game uh, was... Uh, a judgment was passed on them as to well that means that you are this or you think this yeah. whereas this game because it's been such an inescapable topic everyone knows about this debate as far as I'm aware maybe there are people who don't who are outside mm. the gaming sphere but but even if you're outside the gaming sphere you know JK Rowling yeah exactly so she's always in the news everyone knows about it and therefore every single person's decision to either buy or not buy is going to be like tied to to this debate explicitly, yeah. whereas mm -hmm. historically, although there have been controversial games, the purchase or lack of purchase hasn't, in every case, been like shown to be representative of that person's opinion. So yeah, yeah. yeah. it's crazy. Um, so to bring it back to the question, it's ultimately up to you mm. uh, how you decide that you want to tackle this particular game. It's never been a situation like this before, as far as I'm aware, um, and. Oh, God, it's going to be out soon and the conversation is not over and there's already people who have either stopped listening to this podcast or have just mm. spouted off a load of vitriol in the comments oh, yeah. below, yeah. either for 
going too far or not going far enough in mm -hmm. what we've said. So it just try to be courteous to other people and uh, trans women are women. Yeah. Mm. It doesn't take a lot of effort to be kind. Yeah. And no. nice on the internet. It's so much effort to be horrible. Also like it takes even less effort to like just be quiet. Yeah. Hey, how about just delete that comment? It doesn't mm. we don't need to see it. No, we don't. It's really good for engagement, but like hey, we don't need it. It is good for engagement. Yeah, if you, you, don't just, need to post if you put it. loads of comments in the, in the comments, <laughs> yeah. it, it does actually help. Yeah. So thank you for that. Mm. Well, it's time to move on to a big discussion that's slightly less uh, intense than that. Mm. So get prepared for tonal whiplash as we move to the big discussion. Mm. It's big discussion time. Time for the big video game discussion that comes this week courtesy of Dan Scott who says, hello, Ben and Ashton and Peter. Hello. hello. Recently, Microsoft announced Hiffy Rush, Hi-Fi Rush, a game published by Bethesda <laughs> and developed by Tango Gameworks, which they're, or Fanta Gameworks, if you're in German, mm. yeah. which then dropped on Game Pass the very same day. The game has since reviewed really positively with some calling it a potential game of the year contender. What are your thoughts on games being released in this manner? It's a nice surprise for Xbox and PC owners, of course, but is it counterintuitive for developers to release quality games with so little marketing? And for consumers, is hype and buzz for a new game part of the overall experience love you all i have a side question for you Thank about uh, hi-fi rush do you think that the word rush looks like gravity rush font oh i'd need to see it i do i yeah, think they I look really know. similar i'll have a look mm. now but then i actually haven't looked at the gravity rush logo but i just think whenever i see it i think it looks just like gravity rush maybe it logo. does i don't know the best game nobody played gravity yeah rush. yeah mm. um are you two aware of the concept of survivorship bias i think it's called no where in world war ii planes would yes. come back from mm -hmm. like bombing raids and stuff and they would have bullet holes um in like specific parts of the wing like the wing tips and like towards the middle but not around the engines mm. and so the the air force decided right we really need to reinforce those wing tips and like and those bits because look that's where all the shots are going into those wing tips and someone else then pointed out no, no, no. These are the planes that make it back. Yeah. It's the planes that get shot in the engines that don't come back. You need to reinforce the flipping engines. Mm. And it's called survivorship bias. And I saw a, um, a screenshot of a headline where it said something like, does Hi-Fi Rush's instant success prove that we need to like stop marketing games for all this time? <laughs> no. And no. Then all they posted underneath was the diagram of the planes with red dots all over the wings. Oh, and... that's what that is, is yeah. it? I kept seeing that and I was like, I don't get it. And basically the argument is, yes, Hi-Fi Rush has done really well uh, by doing a, what do you call it? Like a stealth launch or a... a uh, shadow, 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 shadow. Yeah, shadow. Yeah. Um, uh, but... That does not necessarily mean that that's the the only way to succeed or the best way to succeed. No. Now we have said before um, that we don't like games that are being revealed five years in advance. Well, not we don't like those games, but we don't like the fact that they're being revealed super early, and then we have to wait a long time, and then there's probably the inevitable delays um, on on uh, release dates. So. There's a happy medium here, I think, but I don't think it's a good idea or it wouldn't be a good idea for every game, every game and every publisher to suddenly like try and take a leaf out of this game's book and, and stop doing kind of updates and re like teasers and reveal trailers and, you know, try and like build a bit of hype across, say, a year or two. Mm. Um, I think this is uh, an interesting uh, outlier. And I think there are whatever the um the standard becomes so say that this is how we'd we'd always done things that games just get dropped out of nowhere mm. if like this new and exciting game called hi-fi rush came along and it was like teased for three years and then was like successful people would say is hi-fi rush proof mm. that we should be teasing games we should for be three years games? so mm. yeah it, it's done well and i'm really excited to play it and i'm really happy for it um, and every so often this is going to work very well for a game, but it doesn't necessarily mean that this is the way to go for everyone. Mm -hmm. Hey, I liked it. I thought it was great. And I'm glad that we got to play it day one. And it was like, here's a game. It's out now. Have fun. And yeah. I'm really glad it's done well. But like Peter says, I don't want every game to be doing that because it's hard enough to keep track of what's going on anyway. And I don't need to just be like, oh, happy Thursday. Here's a brand new game that you're probably really excited for. Mm -hmm. Like, 
I can't handle that. I can't handle that stress. So please don't do that to me. Uh, maybe once in a while. That's nice. Great. I like the idea of not teasing things so far in advance. Love that. Keep that. Did you guys know actually that we saw Forspoken at the PlayStation 5 reveal? But it wasn't called Forspoken and it was just like a tech demo. Oh yeah, I remember that tech of Square demo. Square Enix and it, there's Forspoken oh, is in yeah. there. Yeah, the palette is kind of similar. I remember yeah. it in my head, yeah. But uh, it had a different name. Anyway, sorry. Hmm. Um, but that was ages ago. Um, and, uh, you know, I like that it's just like a here's an exciting thing. And I was like, oh, this game looks really good. And then you turn around two minutes later and they're like, you can play it right now. It's like a nice little present for me. What? Yeah. It's like someone bakes you a nice cake and they're mm. like, and you're like, oh, do I have to wait till later like, to eat this? And they're like, it? no, no. It really it's good. for now. You can have a slice now. I'm like, oh, oh my brilliant. God. Um, yeah, I like it. And I'm and I'm glad it's done so well. But like I said, I don't want every game to think that they can do that. But if it encourages studios to be a little bit more like excited about something that's literally happening very, very soon, like turn around at the beginning of the month and say, this month, we will be dropping this game. It's coming out in three weeks. Here's a bunch of content mm. to look at. It'll be here in three weeks. It will be here, we promise. Mm. Like, that's what I'd like. That's great. But I also understand the whole, like, year-long marketing campaign. God of War came out two months ago, and we're getting marketing for it now. Yeah. Still, mm. which is great. Glad that they're still selling it. But um, it is that weird thing of seeing all this marketing about games that isn't currently, you know, on this, the horizon. But yeah, I'm I'm glad it's done really well, and I I would be up for more of this happening, but not all all the time. Not all of the time. Please. Uh, to answer your question about the similarity of the uh, the logos, the fonts, uh, the answer is sort of. Yeah, mm. I think they sort, sort of, of look okay. similar. Yeah. Uh, I love a shadow drop. It doesn't happen very often. Uh, I noted a few ones that I remember. Unravel 2 was announced mm. and they said, it's out today at E3 or the EA's whatever equivalent mm -hmm. of E3 a mm -hmm. few years ago. Uh, Fallout Shelter was another one that I think was also at an E3 where they said, look at this amazing, cool little mobile game that's going to take over your life. By the way, it's, oh, it's that out game slapped. now. I love I loved Fallout Shelter. Uh, and Entwined was one that PlayStation showed off, I think, again at an E3. And then they said, oh, this lovely game is available this afternoon. The difference between all of those, apart from Fallout Shelter, which was free, of course, is that Hi-Fi Rush is on Game Pass. Mm -hmm. So there is, relatively speaking, zero risk in terms of them needing to sell copies to make their money back. Yeah. Um, so that that is a huge difference maker. Not many people are in that position uh, in order to you know to, to be able to do that uh yeah if anyone can do it it's microsoft yeah microsoft are in a unique position to to be able to do it it also helps if you've got a huge backer like xbox or if mm. you've got a huge platform like e3 to show off a game like that and then say oh by the way this uh this cool thing you can have it you can take it home right now if you'd like um i i think it also helps if you're part of a major franchise as with fallout shelter obviously high fiber outside yeah. of the the game pass situation uh, i doubt you're going to see any triple a games ever be announced and released on the same day mm. uh because they need to sell copies and the marketing machine needs to needs to be there to sell them i just think it's all about game pass it's it's all about game pass high fi rush could not have shadow dropped if it wasn't on Game Pass, That's such a um, good point. I really, I really don't think that 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 would have happened. I love it. I love that it did shadow drop. And as you guys have said, and we talk about on this podcast a lot, stop announcing games so bloody early. <laughs> stop it. There is there is a middle ground. There's there's either six years out or day of release. And any time you know maybe a year leading up to launch is is good by me. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Yeah, I think I, I don't think you're going to see many examples of Hi-Fi Rush ever happen, um, unless Microsoft is working on more stuff that, uh, that 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 they're keeping secret, which they may well do. Uh, but I'm excited to play it. I am. It, it looks good, and I'm glad it's going down well because we wouldn't, have, as you said, Peter, we wouldn't be having this conversation if it wasn't good. No. no. Uh, it's done really well on Steam as well, though, which yeah. I think it's quite surprising actually how many people have bought it on Steam. Mm. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so, so at that point, it's just let's let's see if it if it is good and the word of mouth gets out mm. and uh, you know how many people are watching this this Xbox showcase thing and uh, see if we can sell some copies on 
the only platform that we're not giving it away for free on. But I suppose it does make sense to it sell well on Steam after you put it on Xbox because everyone who's playing on Xbox is going, yeah, this game's great, mm. but people on PC are like, oh, well, I guess I'll, just, I'll give it a go because mm. them over there said it's really good. Well, that so. sold for Spoken, didn't it, on like last weekend? Yeah, last Every weekend day. I did. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, God. Team. That's a damning and diamond. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yes. there we are. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. Let us know respectfully what you think of everything we've discussed today in the podcast. Uh, and Peter's going to tell you some places around the internet where you can find us. YouTube.com and Twitch.tv forward slash Team Triple Jump. We put our videos out on YouTube and we stream on both YouTube and Twitch. And when we're streaming on both YouTube and Twitch, we're modded by Lord Brotovich, Trowling Badger and Mr. Black. Uh, if you've got Amazon Prime, part of that bundle that you're already paying for includes a Twitch sub that you can spend on us at no extra cost and you get all the usual benefits. So do that if you like. Twitter.com and Facebook.com forward slash Team Trip or Jump for video and live stream announcements, legacy video content, uh, uh, highlights of the week from Twitch, uh, a little bit of news, all sorts of things posted by Fraser. Thank you, Fraser, for posting those. TikTok.com forward slash at Team Triple Jump is our TikTok where Ashton posts TikToks. Um, I'm sometimes in them, but not very often. <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash Team Triple Jump is the last one from me. That is uh, our Patreon, of course, where there are various tiers available um, that you can look at and all kinds of rewards. So check out the range, you know? Mm. It, it can be as little as like $1 up to... Flipping loads of dollars. Per Browse month. our wares. Mm. Yeah. Stranger. What are you buying? We have a website. It's triple J U dot M P. It spells jumps very clever. Triple J dot mm. If you want to go to our Discord and chat with our wonderful community, why not go to triple J dot mup forward slash Discord? On Discord, we're modded by Jack, Joe, Tori, and Holloway. So if you have to do something, bloody well do it. All right. Be nice on there. Behave. Be respectful. Behave. Um, if you want to listen to the podcast in its audio forms, want to go to triple j dot map forward slash podcast. If you want to check out one of the live stream vods, if you may have missed one from this week, want to go to triple j dot map forward slash vods. Mm. And if you want to book a cameo from any of us three on James Jenkins, want to go to triple j dot map forward slash cameo. And lastly, if you want to buy some sick and cool merch like this one, like that one in black, like that one, or like like this one double merch in it today you can go to triplejumpshop.com and make sure you're following at triplejumpshop on twitter for the latest merch announcements yes uh, why not follow peter and ashton at that peter austin and at scrambled ashton on twitter instagram and hive and myself just on twitter at confused underscore dude we do lists every monday tuesday wednesday thursday streams every monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday thursday being the joint stream Blazer. on youtube monday tuesday wednesday friday being uh, worst games ever is fortnightly friday for patrons of a certain tier sunday for everybody else the podcast is every saturday and we do shows all the flipping time come check them out Come check them out. Why not leave a five-star review on your platform of choice? It helps something to do with Al Gore's rhythms, and we would really appreciate it. Uh, quite a few things out this week. Mm, loads. Loads. We've got a new channel trailer. Uh, yeah. It's really nice. It's it's on our Facebook. It's on our Twitter. It's on our YouTube, and it's on our Twitch. So yeah. you can't Kieran escape it. it. Kieran, Kieran done, done a great it. job. Mm. Uh, a bit job. of a departure from previous years, but it's lovely, and uh, you should go and watch it and give it a like. Mm. Uh, the also, gaming podcast video went out this week. Yeah, we said it last week, but actually it came out. It was this week. This week mm. on Wednesday. So if you want to find out what's coming out this month, apparently I missed one game called Wanted Dead, and people were really upset about that. Oh, no. so oh really? I'm really oh, sorry, okay. but I missed that game. I literally have never heard of it. Um, <laughs> My apologies. Um, so that came out. Check that out if you want to find out what's coming on Game Pass and PlayStation Plus as well. It's all on there. So check it. It's also on the podcast Homies. audio feed. Yes. And, uh, so you may have listened to it already. Mm, you may have done. We've also got a worst games ever for Eat Lead or Eat Lead, possibly. <laughs> yeah, we don't know which. Um, which is available on, or was available on Friday uh, for patrons of a certain tier and will be available tomorrow mm. at the time of release of this podcast for everyone else. So Is it like Pencil Lead? Yes. Uh, yeah, it could be. Don't eat lead. Place. It is Don't. literally toxic. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it. And finally, next week uh, on Thursday will be our celebration of turning four years old and also 250,000 subscribers. So come along to the stream. And I think, is that after work we're going to the buffet as well? Mm. Is that that day? Yes, I think, I think so. Yeah. So we're going out for a team meal, which mm. is very exciting. Mm -hmm. Big uh, tea. So do come along and watch it. We'll be playing a worst games ever, TBD. It might be one from The Vault, a classic. And uh, it'll be going on the VODs channel as, as usual. So you can check it out there afterwards if you miss it live. 
Just enough time to talk about this week's sponsor again, which of mm. course is Like a Dragon Itchin, which is the new uh, Yakuza, not Yakuza game, and is also a light, unperfumed uh, cream that will that can be used all over your body, face, and hands to give long-lasting on hair, dry, face. and sensitive skin on your dead face, and it's suitable for daily use. So that's available at some point. I don't know. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Look after yourselves. Bye. Bye. Bye.